too cheerful for so early in the morning. My dear, I have a right to be cheerful. Things have never gone better for Carlo Crown in the Crown Photo Studio. I'm glad. Your enthusiasm is overwhelming. My dear, you should be thrilled by the success of your new career. The ad agency loved the ballerina photos of you, and the perfume company loved you so much that they sent you a full case of Arabesque perfume. I do not care for it much. Good Lord, don't breathe that to a soul. Now, the uh, ad agency wants you for a full series of cosmetic ads, and I've told them that your fee has been upped. And you do not work for small change. You're right, Carly, I don't. Damn it. I told you not to call me by that name. You address me by that name just once in public, and they will be taking pictures of me. Full face, right and left profile with numbers underneath. <laughs> don't be so hysterical. There's nobody here, not even your assistant. No, and I don't expect her either. Father died last night, and I told her not to come in today. Compassion from you? Compassion always for beauty, my dear. <laughs> beauty is my business. And is she your business too, Mrs. Carla Whitney? Yes. It's the bride and groom. The Whitneys are back from their honeymoon, you know. Married almost two weeks. And they said it wouldn't last. What an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> Which one shall I choose? It all depends. For what are you going to use it for? Well, I need it to go bird hunting. Mother, how are you feeling? I'm feeling absolutely wonderful. Even <laughs> Dr. Wallace says I'm in great shape. Whatever, whatever the causes for the physical problems in the early stages of pregnancy, they have vanished. So there's no real need for caution anymore. So now all I have to do is convince Draper, and I guess my brother, that I'm fit to travel. <laughs> so what are you expecting next time? A little boy or a little girl? Which one do you want? After this one who eats potato chips at this hour of the morning? <laughs> a little boy, please. Decided we were going to give you a little brother. How's that? How about that? A little brother you can boss around, huh? Mm -hmm. Gosh, she's growing so much, I can't believe it. Uh, she's going to wear my clothes. Mm -hmm. That's good. Very good. Cool. You are such a little beauty. How about I take you home with me for a little while, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can borrow her for a day. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. I won't give you a leash, though. So you're going to have to have one of your own. <laughs> I would love that. I really would. <laughs> Bet your miles mm. would, too. Mm. Yeah, I think he has daughter. enough potato chips. Mm. I think he's already got a daughter of his own, that one that's full grown. I'm going to get fat. <laughs> Do you mean Jody? Yeah, he is so protective of her. It's almost as if he had a daughter of his own. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Didn't you say that Jody uh -huh. needs a little extra protection these days? Yes. Even more so now. What do you mean, even more so? Oh, she had a frightening experience yesterday. Even Miles got into the middle of it. What do you mean? Well, I'm going to tell you, April, but in confidence, okay? Uh, of course. Well, yesterday, Gunther, Sky Whitney chauffeur, picked Jody up at the dance studio, and he told her that Sky Whitney had ordered him to do it. Mm -hmm. So she got into the car, and when she got in, he suddenly locked all the doors. It, so? 
Well, then he locked all the doors and he started making advances to her, saying horrible, insinuating things, really oh, no. terrible things, really. And then he started to get into the back seat with her. Well, fortunately, there was a phone in the back seat. So she threatened to call Sky Whitney, at which point I guess he got scared and she was able to get out and run home. Uh, wow, this is a lot. Uh, but, I mean, that man is as scary as it is. I mean, to make, to make advances like that? I know it. Well, fortunately, Miles was home when she got there and he was able to calm her down. But then he decided to go over to the Whitney mansion himself. Oh. Well, I think he got his point across to both Gunther and to Sky Whitney. This isn't the first time that, that Miles has, has locked horns with Gunther, is it? No. No, it's not. But I hope it's the last time, because there is something so intimidating about that man. And it's not just his size, either. I, mean, I, said, and I, I said this to Miles, too. I think that he is evil. Yeah. Well, well I don't know what to say. You know, I'm not worried about Miles, but... I am worried about Gunther and Skylar Whitney. Hmm. Unsavory. That's hmm? the word for Gunther. <laughs> and unpredictable. Uh, that is the word for Skylar Whitney. Look, talking about this is... Giving me the creeps. What do you say we, uh, change the subject, huh? to make good on her threat to talk to Sky Whitney on the limousine phone, so we backed off just enough for her to, to get out of the car and make her escape. Somebody, an 18-year-old kid, for crying out loud. She must have been scared out of her mind. Listen, when she came home, I thought she was going to pass out. She could hardly talk. Is that when you went to the Whitney house? Yeah, I tried to make it very clear to Gunther that if he came within shouting distance of Jody again, I would have his hide nailed to a door. Bet you didn't win any popularity contest there, huh? No, no. By the time I left, I was out of the running. Look, Miles, we've got enough of a case on this guy to bring him down to headquarters right now. Put the fear of the law into him and make him realize he's going to be under observation from now on. Then if you wanted to press charges against him, I think that'd be fantastic. Look, nothing would give me greater pleasure. Last night I was so angry that I was ready to press charges then and there. But, uh, this morning I, I have thought better of it. It would just keep things riled up from now on. Jody and Nicole don't want me to do it. They don't want the agitation. They don't want the publicity. So let's just hope Gunther has gotten the message. Miles, I don't agree. <laughs> Look, this big ape may have been threatened last night by your visit. He's a professional hood. He's... His macho image may have been challenged. I'm afraid that he may feel it necessary to retaliate in a stronger manner. That's why I think if you put an official stamp on this to back you up a little bit, it'd be better. But why don't I get him down uh, here? Uh, really, uh, I gotta think about Jody and Nicole. Let's just let's let it rest just the way it is for the moment. All right. Just remember, this is not a molehill we're dealing with. This is an honest to goodness mountain. Yeah, I know, I know. Thank you for your support. And if things get out of hand again, which I which I doubt, I'll be sure to let you know. I'm late for rounds at the hospital. I'll talk to you later. Thanks again. Okay. breakfast upstairs to Mrs. Whitney. Are you kidding? It's too early. She won't be up till lunchtime. You mean she has her breakfast for lunch? Hey, hey. What are you, a little stupid up here? Give me some coffee. Mr. Whitney gave me orders to straighten up this room. Listen, you. When Mr. Whitney isn't here, you do what I say. the shop? Yes, I did. It made my heart jump into my throat. Glad you liked it. Ballet photos are among my favorites, too. 
You are ten different kinds of a fool, you know that. You might as well put a knee on outside and say, I am Carly Wells, this is my Look, wife. I've told you, do not say that name out loud. Well, you can't go on forever being so smart, playing such dangerous games. As long as I can play games with you, my darling, I don't care if they're dangerous or not. Please, give me a divorce. Let me go. My dear, how can I let you go? You're my wife. And anyway, I know perfectly well that you really don't want a divorce. You just like to be difficult. Now, what's wrong with our being called Mr. and Mrs. Carlo Crown? Everything. Oh, you're so rude. So rude. Anyway, I told you, for me to divorce you legally, I have to reveal my real name. There may be a way for me to do it without you giving away your identity. I really don't want to hear it, but how? Carlo, let's pretend that I go to see a trustworthy lawyer here in Monticello. And all I have to say is that you have given a consent to a divorce, even if your whereabouts are kept secret. You know, people get divorced all the time without the both parties together. Well, that's a perfectly marvelous idea, Martine. Perfectly marvelous. And I won't hear of it. May I help you? I'm Detective Damien Tyler. Oh, yes, we met at the Whitney wedding. Hello, Mr. Duval. Hello. Uh, Detective, are you looking for a photograph of yourself from the wedding celebration? No, as a matter of fact, I'm not. I just happened to see Mr. Duval's picture outside. I was very curious. I'm quite surprised to see you here, Mr. Duval. Mr. Duval is not only a beautiful dancer, but she makes a beautiful model as well. You see, I've engaged her to model for some of Ponticello's prominent advertisers. Oh, that's very nice. That's nice. Thank you. Detective, may I offer you a cup of coffee or a croissant or a brioche? We like to keep a French atmosphere here to make Miss Duval feel at home. No, thanks. I'm on my way to another assignment. By the way, how did you happen to know that Miss Duval was a beautiful dancer? Oh, Mr. Tyler. I only have to watch Mr. Val move across the room, and I can tell that. I see. Out just as I imagined it. You people are wonderful today. I knew it was going to take a while, but it's finally coming together. If you open the company like you danced just now, the Whitney Dance Company will run forever. And we owe it all to you, Gavin. <laughs> Nonsense. Sky Whitney will owe it all to you. What's gotten into him? Those are the first words of praise I've heard since we started rehearsals. You got me. Uh, maybe he won the lottery. Uh, Either that or he's in love. <laughs> Eleanor, I'm going to get you for that one. <laughs> uh, excuse me, Eleanor, would, would you guys run through that again and stay brilliant, all right? Well, Kelly? Yeah? If you're looking for Jody, she's not here. No, I'm not looking for Jody today. I, uh, I came to talk to you. Okay. I'll bet I know the subject matter. It's Jody, isn't it? Yes, and I think my instincts are correct. About what? I think there's a hell of a lot more feeling between you and Jody than either of you are willing to admit. Kelly, I don't like to hurt anyone. But I'm going to tell you straight, because I don't believe in hedging around the subject. Jody and I have admitted to ourselves first and then to each other about how we feel. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to say that like you're announcing the end of the world to me, because for me, it's not. Anyway, I know it's been a gradual thing between you two. It's been a long time in coming, but I'm going to be supportive. 
both of them. You're a generous guy, Kelly. Thanks. It's still gonna be tough for Jody to tell you herself, and I know she wants to. I'll try and make it as easy for her as I possibly can, Gavin. So long. Kelly, no hard feelings, right? No, not at all. Okay, and you'll come by and say hello whenever you can? Sure. I mean, after all, uh, you could resist a place like this. It's so full of pretty ladies. Just relax, my darling. Come on, we, we can't work this way, you know that. How can I relax after that? After what? That detective coming here, finding me here, with you. I told you, Carlo, the idea of putting this picture out front was just stupid. I mean, why don't you advertise on TV? You might get a bigger audience. Oh, I bet you could get the whole police department, the Secret Service, and the FBI. A team. Now, you know how given you are to exaggeration. Detective Tyler didn't suspect a thing. Now, in the first place, he is not really a brilliant mind, an outstanding mind. I think you should relax. Come with me. I think that man might be better suited in the trades, a trade where he can use his hands, like plumbing. One day, you may find yourself learning that trade in prison. Uh, Vive la France. Oh. Valerie, what in the world are you doing here? I told you not to come into work today. Yes, but it's much harder not having anything to do, so I'd like to try to keep busy here, if it's okay with you. Of course, Valerie. I'm deeply sorry about your father, Val. Thank you. Your sympathy is appreciated, and a lot of work would be appreciated. Fine. If you insist, there's plenty to do here. What's in that suitcase? Um, Daddy's belongings. I went to the hospital this morning to make some funeral arrangements, and they gave me this. It's his clothes and personal effects, I guess. Valerie, maybe you shouldn't go through this right now. It's got to be done sometime, Carlo. That's peculiar, isn't it? What? Val, it's underlined. see the Whitney's I came to see you about what about uh, harassing dr. Kavanaugh and certain other members of his family and what the hell are you talking about <laughs> look you may not be incredibly bright but you certainly do know what I'm talking about look out there I don't have a whole lot of patience for repeating myself so I'm gonna say this one more time just to imprint it on your puny mind you pull another stupid stunt like this last one I'll scrape enough evidence against you to put you away for a long time you can count on it. Why didn't he say what he was doing in the garden? He's a cop. They're always hiding behind something. The only thing is, I'm not sure he was the one I saw out there. you live in. <laughs> 